Talk about a big bang. Planet Earth has had its life flash before its eyes many times throughout history. Here are 10 times life on Earth was almost destroyed. The oldest close call that scientists know of was likely caused by a huge blow up in Siberia, which led to a period called the Great Dying. But this was no Cold War. The Earth got cooked. 250 million years ago, long before the dinosaurs, marks the end of the Permian era, when all of Earth's landmass was still connected as Pangaea. A massive outpouring of volcanic activity in modern-day Siberia contributed to a 200,000-year period of global warming. Lava flowed over carbon-rich rock, like coal, and massive amounts of CO2 were absorbed by the oceans, making seawater toxic to invertebrates. Temperatures rose as much as 14.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and oceans lost about 80% of their oxygen. Changes like acidification and shifts in the productivity of photosynthetic organisms also acted as additional causes. The Great Dying killed about 96% of all life on Earth, and it took millions of years for the planet's biodiversity to recover. Earth's hottest near-death experience is the Chicxulub impact. Third graders know the event as the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. The asteroid struck 66 million years ago beneath the Gulf of Mexico near the Yucatan Peninsula and formed a crater of melted rock 93 miles wide. The impact shot molten debris into the air, causing wildfires thousands of miles away, which were then doused out by massive tsunamis a few hours later. Fossils of fish killed in the immediate aftermath of the impact have recently been discovered as far away as North Dakota. The temperature went up dramatically as far as 900 miles away until the vaporized rock blocked out much of the sun, causing a global cooling for years. The event killed approximately 75% of land and marine animals, but at least we got the Jurassic Park movies out of it. The Marine Isotope Stage 6 Glacial Event is the only mass extinction event to inspire a hit children's movie franchise. Uh, until my screenplay about the Soviet computer glitch of 79 gets a green light. Generally, ice ages are thought to be caused by changing atmospheric composition, the position of continents on Earth's ever-moving tectonic plates, and fluctuations in ocean currents. During this most recent ice age, which happened between 195,000 and 123,000 years ago, Homo sapiens roamed Africa and Eurasia alongside woolly mammoths and cave bears. The climate cooled rapidly, creating cold, dry conditions. Glaciers covered Antarctica and large parts of Europe, North America, South America, and small areas in Asia. It's possible that only a few hundred Homo sapiens survived this period by migrating to southern Africa, where it was warm enough for shellfish, mammals, and edible plants to remain abundant. It's believed that all of humankind descends from this group of people. There's no debate that the Toba supervolcano eruption 74,000 years ago is Earth's largest known explosive eruption. However, its effect on Earth's life is under heated debate. Located in modern-day Sumatra, Indonesia, the Toba explosion spewed 700 cubic miles of magma. The 1815 Tambora eruption, one of the most destructive eruptions in known geological history, was one-twelfth the size. The Toba catastrophe theory is that ash from the eruption caused a volcanic winter of almost a decade and initiated a thousand-year-long cooling period across the planet, leading to a mass extinction of plant, animal, and human life. However, in 2013, discoveries of fossils in East Africa from before and after the eruption told a different story. The fossils showed little change in vegetation growth, and some scientists argue that the volcano had no effect on human populations and that it even forced them to form new adaptive strategies. Mount Tambora, also in Indonesia, stood 14,000 feet tall until April 10, 1815, when its top 4,000 feet were blown off in the most destructive eruption ever recorded. Flames, dust, gas, and smoke blasted into the air, 
while boulders rained from the sky and burning ash rolled down the mountain at over 100 miles per hour like a flaming avalanche. 10,000 people were killed instantly, but the devastation had only just begun. The debris floating in the air had far-reaching consequences. Sulfuric gas combined with water vapor created aerosol clouds that rained sulfuric acid, poisoning people's lungs. Global temperatures dropped, and 1816 was called the year without a summer. Snowfall in New York and Maine was recorded in June. It's during this gloomy year that Mary Shelley wrote the iconic horror novel, Frankenstein. More importantly, many crop harvests in North America were ruined, leading to a widespread famine. In Europe, the conditions led to the spread of disease. It's estimated that an additional 90,000 people died in the fallout from Tambora. In 1859, astronomer Richard Carrington observed what was later named the Carrington Event, the largest solar flare to strike Earth ever recorded. Observing two sunspots from his observatory in London, Richard noticed two bright white patches of light. The energy from these two fireballs in the form of electrified gas and subatomic particles was equivalent to 10 billion atomic bombs. A few minutes later, a geostorm was felt across the entire globe. Telegraph communications went haywire, machines rained sparks, papers combusted, the aurora borealis phenomenon, the northern lights, was seen as far south as Jamaica. The night sky became so bright, birds chirped and people got up and went to work, thinking it was morning. While getting up before it's necessary feels like the end of the world, the crimson sky had many people thinking it really was the apocalypse. And today, when virtually everything relies on electricity, a second Carrington event would not be good. Did you hear about the billion-ton comet that missed Earth by inches? Neither did anyone else. In 1883, Mexican astronomer Jose Bonilla observed 447 objects passing across the face of the sun. He submitted his findings to an astronomy journal, but the editors, unable to explain them, said they were likely flying birds or dust on the camera's lens. But in 2011, astronomer Hector Monterola gave Bonilla's findings another look and concluded that the objects were the remains of a comet that had recently broken up. They deduced the comet would have weighed a billion tons, stretched over 800 meters across, and passed as close as 600 kilometers from Earth its impact all but certainly wiping out all life. Monterola claims the reason nobody else saw what Bonilla did is because of the parallax effect, which also affects eclipses and happens when an object is so close only those in certain areas can see it. A retroactive close call indeed. A number of real-time close calls took place during the Cold War. The first came in 1979, when technicians at NORAD received an alert that the Soviets had launched a barrage of missiles on North America. The military scrambled 10 fighter jets, the president's doomsday plane, and retaliatory missiles were prepped before discovering a technician had accidentally run a simulation of a Soviet attack. The reverse occurred in 1983, when a Soviet lieutenant running a defense bunker received a warning that five American ICBMs were headed toward Russia. He had orders to warn Soviet high command, but with just minutes to decide and pretty much the fate of the world in his hands, he decided it was likely a false alarm and didn't report it, likely avoiding nuclear holocaust. The third came later in 1983, NATO ran a war game simulating how an attack on Europe by the Soviets would be met by a U.S. nuclear attack. Unbeknownst to them, the Soviets suspected this might be a cover for an actual attack and prepared as such until the exercise ended. Nobody from NATO knew until months later. By 1989, the universe was a lot like Hollywood, recycling old storylines. Before, it was a comet, now, it's an asteroid. It was discovered nine days after its close call with Earth. An impact would have released as much energy as a 600 megaton atomic bomb. If it landed in the ocean, the sea would boil and tsunamis would ravage every coast. Hitting land would cause earthquakes, a mile deep crater. Bruce Willis is still alive. Why do we even care about this? We're fine. 
The asteroid passed at about twice the distance of the Earth to the moon. But as an expert put it, on the cosmic scale of things, that's a close call. Last but most recent, and therefore the scariest, is the solar flare of 2012. On July 23rd, a coronal mass ejection tore through the Earth's atmosphere with the same power as the Carrington event, striking a satellite. If it had occurred a week earlier, it would have been a devastating direct hit on the planet that relies much more heavily on electricity than it did 160 years ago. The results of a direct hit would damage satellite communications and power grids so badly that the total economic cost could exceed $2 trillion. According to NASA, a direct hit could cause widespread power blackouts, disabling everything that plugs into a wall socket. Most people wouldn't even be able to flush their toilet because urban water supplies largely rely on electric pumps. In other words, get your gas-powered cell phones ready. Did you know the Earth almost exploded three times while you were watching this video? I'm not positive about that, but I'm sure we'll hear about it days or years from now. Let us know in the comments if you think we missed a global close call with disaster.